Hey guys, it's GTSS, and if you've ever looked for a high quality and free video editor, you've probably come across Adobe Premiere Pro, which is a very advanced and awesome video editor, but it will cost you 40 bucks a month, and you've probably also figured out by now that there's this thing, thing called Final Cut Pro by Apple, but that will also cost you 300 bucks. But there's still a lot of hope. Enter into the scene a nonlinear video editor called Shotcut. Shotcut is a newly made free and open source nonlinear video editor. I know it's a lot of words. And it is a very advanced video editor for the price, which is free. It's no Adobe Premiere Pro, but it's definitely worth your zero bucks. So the first step in making your new video once you open the program is to open up a file. Now I'm here going to open up my intro file because I mean it's just so cool as you can see there. And um, you know you can play back and you can click the plus button to add it to your timeline. And you keep doing this for all the files you want. So I'm going to insert my background because I like blue. And I can preview the file right there and then add it to my timeline again. And I can also scrub through with the slider drag thing. And that's a pretty basic feature. I mean, it's nothing special, but it's good to see that an open source project is getting the basics right like it is here. Now, I can add a video track, which pretty much confirms what I said earlier about it being a non-linear video editor. And I can also look at the properties of every file I import, you know, like the codec information, etc. Now, you can do a lot of things here. You can add a lot of filters, a lot of video effects is another word, way to say that. It's not as much as Premiere Pro, there you don't have plugins yet, but it all of them work well and they work stably. I've never had this program crash on me either. So I can add a vignette here, for example, for no apparent reason. I can change the radius of it. I can do a lot of things here and it all loads pretty well. Uh, you don't need a very, very powerful thing to do this. Now for picture in picture, which is a big deal for video editors like me and many others, all you have to do is drag one of your uh, images and video clips to the top and then add an effect called size and position again similar to other professional grade video editors you can insert a custom resolution here what I usually do is make it 720p and then you can just drag it around the entire screen and you have a nice high quality um, picture in picture effect and you can use this for let's say you're recording gameplay and you have a webcam that you want to put in the bottom right corner there's a lot of various effects you can do with this but it all works very smoothly and very nicely, so that's something definitely good to see on a project. Now to see everything behind it, just click on Composite, which is again a nice feature, and there you go, you've got picture-in-picture. Picture. Now it does lag a little bit when you're doing picture-in-picture, uh, picture because, I mean, it's not a perfect piece of software, and neither is my laptop, but it definitely gets the job done, and it's nice to see this on an open-source project that's barely one year old. So you can play through the clips so far to see what you've got, um, you can use your keyboard shortcuts like J, K, and L, which is a big deal on the software. It's been emphasized a lot. And overall, it's just a very intuitive software. I can just split in a uh, with a click of a button. It's a lot easier to use than like Blender, which I tried and failed to use. Um, encoding a lot of different options. Uh, be careful. There's not that many that actually work to a good result. But uh, just 1080p, 30 frames per second. Boom, you're done. You can change the codec information, whether it be audio or video, if you want, you know, AVI, AAC, whatever you want. There's a lot of customization here with your encoding. You customize a lot about it, and once you're ready, you can just encode the file, and it gets to encoding as you're about to see right now. So once it's complete, you can go ahead and check for, you know, compatibility. I always use VLC player. But as you can see right there, it renders nicely at a smooth 30 frames per second and 1080p quality, as I'm about to show you right now. Um, that That's a very rare feature on many video editors. It only allows 720p, like Lightworks, if you've used that one. So there's a lot of different options you can do with the encoding, but uh, this is the one that works for me. And um, this is the video editor that works for me, too. So if you guys liked this video editor, I'll have a link to download Everything and all the information I got, even, you know, the program download in the description below. Right here, I'm saving the project file. So check out the description for all the links. Um, tell me what you guys think about this. It's definitely a very useful product. And thanks for watching, guys.